Don't just live for tomorrow Or just live for yesterday Just be glad for all you have that's in today And though you've come through many obstacles Hey everyone, Connie here and welcome back to more Spy Family. That's right, we are back with episode 13 and it's been it's been a little bit. I, I think there was like a one season break in between uh, Cores 1 and 2 of this series. I don't know why they did that. It, it's just a weird decision and I feel like more shows are doing that lately. Like, it's one thing for a, a series that's put onto Netflix to do that because fucking Netflix. But for a series that's just airing normally to air in that way, it just, I don't get it. It's like, I understand if they need more time to work on the second half. I, like, I kind of get that idea, but why not just wait until more work is done so that you can start putting the entire series out and not having to worry about that? I just, I, I don't understand why they have to do it in this manner. Maybe that's just me. I feel like it would have been, it would have made more sense if they just waited from a, initially releasing until they had much more of it done so that they didn't have to take a break in between. Because this isn't a second season. It's a, it's the same season. It's just another core. It's it's just it starts from episode thirteen. It's it, it's a thing that a, a lot of uh, Western studios will do for their cartoons and stuff, taking break uh, part way through a season and stuff, like a mid season hiatus and all. But a lot of anime, like to my knowledge, haven't really done that until more recently. And, I don't know, it just feels weird to me. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. It just, it's just maybe my own personal thing. <laughs> um, but either way, we are back. So, in the first half of Spy Family, we got introduced to our Spy Family. Uh, Lloyd Forger, whose real name is unknown, but goes by the code name of Twilight. He is a spy uh, working to uncover some important information regarding Donovan Desmond. In order to do so, he has to create a fake family and get his fake daughter into the academy that Desmond's son goes to. Um, in order to possibly strike up a friendship in a way between families that'll help him get an in to getting this sensitive information. He meets an assassin named Yor, though he doesn't know she's an assassin. Um, he just thinks she's this mild-mannered uh, city worker. And in order to help them both out in a current situation, he proposes the idea of creating this fake marriage with her. It'll help her out from seeming less suspicious uh, because apparently being a woman over a certain age and not being married is suspicious. Um, I know this is based on like Cold War era uh, Europe and everything, but it's like, really? That's rude. <laughs> That's basically saying that a woman has to be married to have worth and everything. And it's, it's really fucking gross to be fair. But again, based on, with what this is based on, um, it's realistic. It doesn't make a right. And I don't think it's meant to be seen as such, but yeah. Um, but we then also have Anya, who is a daughter who Lloyd initially adopts even before meeting Yor. And she is secretly a lab experiment, a psychic who can read minds, 
pretty easily, but does tend to get overwhelmed if there's too many minds to read around her at once. Um, Anya is very precocious and goofy. She, she's, a, she's a kid, let's be honest, and she's a very good depiction of a kid. Um, she acts very much like a child would. And I'm excited to see what more they do with her because they have now teased a fourth member to the family at the end of the season and that is a dog um because every good family needs a dog right <laughs> right piper um so in the first season we had shenanigans going on just the the family trying to learn to you know act as a family getting anya into the school and getting her to behave in the school <laughs> Um, meeting Desmond's son, um, dealing with Yuri, the very creepy, very unlikable brother of Yor, um, who I hope we see very little of in this second half of the season. Um, and just a bunch of other wacky hijinks. Um, and some of the best stuff, for me at least, was seeing Yor act in a motherly fashion to Anya. Um, and in a very protective motherly fashion, such as when Anya is uh, very, very temporarily kidnapped by these thugs who wish to use her because she's wearing the school uniform for this uh, prestigious school. So they want to use her to get some money, but Yor comes out of nowhere and like practically just lays the smack down on their asses. But, like she comes out of nowhere, just kicks one dude's ass and then threatens the rest of them uh saying she'll like beat them up like a watermelon or something <laughs> um obviously more elegantly worded but yeah it's it's those moments that are, are really some of my favorites uh the school stuff i'm not as big a fan of i know a lot of people really like the school stuff um and I like it. I don't, I don't dislike it by any means. It's just, it's the weakest parts of the series for me. Um, a lot of my biggest appeal for this show relies on the family aspect. When Anya is alone at the school, it's not as entertaining. Um, and it, it's still entertaining. Anya uh, just r interacting with Becky and, uh, and Damien and that one kid who looks like he's an adult but is somehow still the same age as Anya uh, because that's the joke. And yet he still acts like a kid. I don't remember his name, but you know who I'm talking about during the volleyball, or not volleyball, dodgeball game. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really interesting. It's, it's a fun series, it's funny, it's entertaining. And now the big question comes in with this second half of the season. What's the new opening and ending going to be like? Because let's be honest, the opening and ending for the first half of the season were so good that I'm, I'm legitimately afraid that the, sec that the new ones won't like hold up. I, I'm afraid it's going to be a Jujutsu Kaisen situation where the the second opening and ending for the series is so drastically worse than the first ones that it's practically unwatchable. Because the first opening and ending for Jujutsu Kaisen was so good that it, it's hard to live up to that. So when it got to the second one, it's like, oh, this is just not good by comparison. It's like, it's not bad the ending is pretty bad but the opening is like it's not bad it's just it's weak compared to the original it's not catchy it's not entertaining it's just not as good by any means if the first one was a 10 the second one would be like at, at most a five <laughs> um and i'm hoping spy family it, it doesn't do that i'm hoping it's able to retain a good second opening. I hope it's more like Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. The first season opening for Dragon Maid was phenomenal, and the second season opening was also phenomenal. Um, so I'm hoping it's more like that. 
but we'll have to see. Um, I know a lot of people have reacted to that before the before the show started even airing. And one last little note, I'm actually recording this before I finish the show it's taking the place of, which is Infinity Train Book 4. Um, I just wanted to get this out because I want to avoid spoilers and all. But yeah, so I'm still excited nonetheless to see where this goes. And even if it does have a weak opening, I'm going to probably still enjoy the series as a whole. As long as Yuri is not in a lot of it. Um, because Yuri is by far the worst part of this series. It's not even close. He is such a terrible, unlikable character. A and he's not even good in terms of like comedic satire. He's just terrible. There is nothing likable about him. Um, either way, we're going to get this going. So, when the screen fades to black, pause this redirect and go to the description below. Follow the link to the reaction, and after you watch it, come back here to the redirect and resume play. Because after it fades to black, then it fades back in. Everything from that point forward will be my afterthoughts and will contain spoilers to the episode. So, that being said, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you at the reaction. And we are back, and we'll begin with spoilers in 3, 2, 1, now. So let's talk about the new opening and ending first. They are so much weaker than the originals. Um, in between recording the reaction and these afterthoughts, I went and watched the new opening and ending again, and I even watched the original ones for comparison's sake. It's night and day. The original openings were so drastically better that it feels like they're not even the same like series almost. Like, uh, obviously, the visuals in the new opening, like, are, are stunning. The lighting, the animation, it's, it's all great. But it lacks the charm and stylistic art artistry of the first opening. The first opening was so good because of the charm of it. The first half of the opening is in this goofy, childlike drawing form. And, and then it switches into the very high quality animation and lighting uh, by showcasing the family in more of a, you know, series proper way, I guess you could say. This new opening is just that second half the entire time. And it's like, it's good, but without the stylistic artistry that the, the, the first opening had in its first half, it's just kind of shallow. It's, it's, there's nothing special about it. Because you see openings like this all the time now. Yes, it looks good, but so does so many other openings that are out there. So what's the big deal? And then you had the music uh, by Bump of Chicken. And it's like, I have no issue with Bump of Chicken, but I'm not as obsessed with them as some people are. Like, they did that Pokemon video, and it's just like, it was okay. It wasn't as great as some people like to pretend. Um, but, obviously, that's all subjective, by the way. Obviously. I shouldn't need to say that, but I will end up needing to say that. Um, but the song was so just safe. It was this generic anime opening song that you, you hear the likes of everywhere. And it just didn't feel special or unique or interesting. It, it, it didn't feel like it, it, its identity was stamped onto this series. You see, you see so many shows where the openings feel like the song is, an, is identified with that opening specifically. Um, the first opening to this, but also you have stuff like uh, Ya Boy Kong Ming, or Attack on Titan even, with its opening songs. And, and then you have something like this, and it's just like, this doesn't feel like a song for Spy Family. It just feels like an anime song that they just put on Spy Family. Its identity is not in Spy Family, it's in 
just generic anime song number 543. It's not interesting. It's not bad, but it's so bland and generic that it's like you've heard this kind of song everywhere before. It doesn't do anything special. It's the same kind of issue that uh, the second openings for shows like Spice and Wolf and uh, Jujutsu Kaisen had. Where it's like the song, it's like it's not bad necessarily. It's just so bland and generic compared to the first opening that it's not fun to watch because of it. Um, and then we had the ending. The ending was a little better because it had some stylistic choice with having it like switch to different parts of the house and it showed the family members uh, doing different th things there. Actually, uh, one of the more recent episodes of She-Hulk did something like that. Um, funny enough, as of when I'm recording this, of course. You got to keep that in mind. Uh, so just say one of the episodes of She-Hulk did that, <laughs> something like that at one point. Um, but it was still missing that charm that the first ending had. The first ending had, obviously, a lot more stylism and artistry to it as well. It was very, uh, uniquely drawn and everything, with kind of everything drawn around Anya. And then eventually going into the family and everything around Anya in black and white, but her bringing color to them. It was, a fan, it was a fantastically stylistic, artistic, uh, visually stunning ending. And this is just like, it's, it's okay. And the song just is, again, just like with the song in the first, or in the opening for this half of the season, it's just like, eh, it's not bad or anything. It's just, meh. Nothing about this opening or ending really live up to the hype that the first ones had. They just aren't anywhere near as good. Visually, musically, just in no way. And it's really disappointing because it's like shows have proven that they can do op uh, second openings or even further where it's like they're just as good or, or better. I, I mentioned in the pre in the pre thoughts that uh, Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid is a good example of this. Uh, Dragon Maid S, the second season, had a phenomenal opening that, in some ways, was even better than the first. Um, but at the very least, is on par with the first opening. Um, and it's like, why can't this be the same? I mean, I, I don't expect it to be like one piece where it's like every opening has a lot to value with it and uh, every opening is like just amazing in some way. I don't expect it to like try to find the level of one piece that one piece does, but there's still just something that's just missing from both the opening and ending here and it's just the charm. It's like they just took the the weakest parts of the first uh, opening and ending and just made a new opening and ending just about that and then put some subpar music to go with it. The weakest part of the first opening was when it switched, was the uh, higher end animation parts. The appeal of the first opening was the stylistic choice of the first half of the opening being in that kind of goofy style and then the switch over being such a stark contrast but the actual second half itself was definitely less interesting and with the ending again the parts that were best about it were the ones that were very stylistic and artistic and creative and unique the ones that had its its own unique style to it and mind you this is just the opening and the ending i'm talking about uh we're spending almost 10 minutes just ranting about this but you have to realize the opening is the first thing people usually see with an anime outside of maybe like a cold open so the opening has to hook viewers in and this one just doesn't hook me in 
Not like the first one did, at least. It's just not as catchy, not as interesting. And when you have a series that did already have a stellar opening, one that I could genuinely say without hyperbole is one of the best anime openings in recent years. When you have something like that, and then follow it up with something that's just so much lesser. I just, it's going to turn people away. And it's gonna make people less invested in the continuation of the series. It just is, because again, it's the first thing they see, or at the very least, they're just gonna skip it every time. They're not going to want to watch it because it's it's boring. And it's like, that's that sucks. A good anime opening is, a, a really good one at least, is unskippable. Is something that you just have to watch every time. Even if in my case as a reactor, I watch it on my own every time and then just start the reaction after that point which i i have done with some things but like there's certain anime openings that i i will never skip even if, again if i watch it on my own but this opening it's like i don't see myself watching this every time and obviously i'll watch it more times maybe i'll get more used to it um but i don't see this being like in my favorite openings of this year or even this season honestly it's unless the other anime openings for this uh fall season just also fall short extremely much then i i don't see it being in my top openings for the season um but who knows i mean it might it just depends on how this season goes at this point with its openings I'm hoping Chainsaw Man's opening is just absolutely phenomenal. Um, considering all the hype around the series, I really want the opening to stick the landing, too. Uh, the endings aren't as big a deal because a lot of people skip endings anyway. A lot of endings, uh, like for me specifically, I don't watch anyway. Even when I like the series, I rarely watch the ending. Uh, or even when I like the ending, I mean... Not the series. Even when I like the ending, I rarely watch it. Um, because it's like I want to just kind of move on. <laughs> um, but yeah. Yeah, either way. This, this was a uh, much, much weaker opening. And ending, in my opinion. And mind you... That's just my opinion, so keep that, uh, or take that with a grain of salt. Let's actually talk about the episode, though, um, because we've been talking for way too long about just the opening and ending. Um, so, in terms of the episode and, and the content within, this is right back to form for Spy Family. Like, it, it feels like it hasn't even been however long it has been since uh, the first half of the season ended. Um, the animation is a little different. I don't know if you noticed that, but especially with, like, Anya, like, the way she moves is a little different. Not bad, it's just, it's noticeable. Um, it's especially noticeable, like, early on in the episode where she's, like, jumping around or whatever. Um, the way she moves is, is, it's noticeably, I, I don't want to say off, because off makes it sound like it's bad. But... And it's not bad. It's it's just different. But she's like moving in a way that I don't think she moved like in the first season or the first half of the season. Um. And I I don't know if the studio is just trying out some new things with this second half. But yeah, it was it was definitely different. But like otherwise, it looked mostly the same, like expression wise and. Just the level of quality you expect with the animation. It's like, that that wasn't an issue. It's just, again, it just looked different. But 
Yeah, it was definitely back to form and continued off of where the last episode, episode 12, kind of cliffhanged us with uh, getting introduced to this dog who can apparently tell the future uh, due to experimentation done on it to be a war dog. Um, our big Borfer, though, is weird. But also, that's kind of the appeal of him. He's kind of a dumbass. Like, is that just me? Like, yeah, he's brave and, and smart and everything, but also extremely dumb. It's like, oh, I'm going to rescue Anya. I'm going to run away from her. Ends up running in, in a circle right back to where he started and right in front of the, the bad guys. And then just ends up getting caught right after super easy. And it's like, yeah, you're dumb. But that's also kind of adorable. And I think you'll fit in well with the Forgers. <laughs> um, like, I, I don't know. Maybe it's because of the fact that he could read minds. And one of the first things we saw of him in this episode is him saving a kid from being crushed by a falling sign. Which was pretty badass. But... Maybe it's because of that, but I, I expected the dog to be smarter. <laughs> but no, the dog's kind of a, a chaotic dumbass. Uh, with a heart of gold and definitely a desire to be brave and help others. But, like, we even see it, like, w when, when he's defending Anya and everything against uh, the terrorists. He's, like, barking at them, but the instant they threaten him, he, like, cowers away. And it's like, oh, you're all borf and no bite. You're not going to be a great guard dog, but you'll be a great companion for Anya nonetheless. I mean, it'll be better for Anya than those weird buff dogs that were flexing. Like, that was just uncomfortable. Why did they have abs? Dogs, no. Just no, I don't like that. I don't like the fact that they had abs and were flexing. I, mm. It's like, I, I get this as a comedic series and everything, but there, there's a certain level that it's just like, that's just a little far, a little uncanny, that it's just, I don't want to see that. <laughs> And it's, it, it almost kind of didn't feel like it was a joke that fit in with the rest of this series. Um, but maybe that's just me. I don't know, but it was, we it was so fucking weird and I just did not like it. Um, but you're obviously badass in this, uh, coming to, uh, the rescue at the end. Which is like, I was kind of going back and forth on whether or not she would be the one to save Anya. Or whether it would be the dog. Um, because at points it seemed like, oh no, the dog is going to save Anya and bring her to safety or whatnot. Um, but then it's like, oh wait, no, the dog is stupid and got caught. So it's got to be your. And it's like, I just kept going back and forth throughout the entire time. Like she was in the hideout of the terrorists and everything. And then when they were running away. And eventually your is the one to come to the rescue. Um continuing to be mother of the fucking year uh just the way she just swoops in like that was amazing but even when she was like panicking trying to find Anya back at the adoption event it's like just the way she was doing it was great the way she casually leapt up to the ceiling like that and the way she like jumped back down right in front of that one dude scaring the shit out of him <laughs> it's like Okay, I really am enjoying how this is working. Like, she's just casually doing it without even thinking about it. Like, obviously, if she were thinking, she wouldn't do something like that in front of so many people. But she's panicked. She's worried about Anya. And so it's not really registering in her mind that she's doing all of this in front of a bunch of people. And most, most of them don't seem to notice. It's just that one dude when she jumps down right in front of his face... <laughs> Um, but yeah, it, 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 we also see Lloyd during the episode, um, going on kind of his own mission, dealing with these same terrorists, uh, at least the same group, excuse me, 
Um, they caught one of the terrorists and are questioning him. He's not giving answers. So they fake that they caught the leader, Keith, who we do end up seeing. Um, he's one of the guys in the hideouts where Anya is. Um, and so we see um, this dude start singing after he sees the fake Keith start to throw him under the bus. And so he starts revealing things and <sighs> Lloyd is still kind of needed, which sucks for Operation Strix because this is an important mission for him. But, you know, this other thing's also very important if it's, you know, terrorist activity. That's kind of a big fucking deal. Um, but it kind of leaves off on a cliffhanger, right? Like right after uh, Yor comes in to save Anya. Are we going to see what happens after that? Or is, is it just going to kind of skip ahead to when Lloyd is done with his work and comes back and reunites with them or whatnot? I don't know. I don't know how it's going to handle that going into episode 14. But I, in terms of the story and in terms of the actual series, I'm definitely still invested. Uh, this is definitely still the same spy family in terms of all that. Um, the opening and ending did show this new character with them, though. Like, had uh, shorter hair, looked like almost like silvery blue. Um, I, I don't think I recognized them, but it showed that person in their house, like, with them. And, and yeah, I'm just wondering who that is. And it was like, they were shown early in the opening, or not early, but sometime during the opening. Um, as well, it looked like they were handing something off. Um, I, I am wondering who that is and what their story is going to be. Um, my first thought was that it was, uh, Handler, but it's like, wait, no, Handler has red hair. <laughs> Unless that's a disguise, but I don't know. We'll, we'll find out, I'm sure. Um, but I'm very happy for this series to be back. I really love this show. It's a fantastic, comedic, uh, and, and really cool series. Um, I just don't like the opening and ending right now. Again, maybe they'll grow on me. Maybe they will. I, I will continue to give them a chance and for now at least watch them some more. But I'm not sold on them. A again, at the very least, they're not anywhere near on the level of the first opening and ending. Uh, but we'll see how it goes. So tell me in the comments below, what did you think? of this episode of Spy Family, episode 13. And what did you think of even the opening and ending? Uh, if you disagree with me, that's completely fine. It's I'm just sharing my opinions, my thoughts. Um, but either way, I would still love to hear what you think no matter what. So for now, I'm Connie, and I'm signing off. See y'all next time.